Welcome to Ask the Pastor, and uh, we have two questions for today. And the first question is a little bit lengthy, but it's worth reading, and so let me share it with you. This is the first question. As the avalanche of extremist organizations continue to dismantle the nuclear family and Christian values, how do we Christians respond to support biblical truth? Then the, this individual goes on to say that they're seeing uh, in their own neighborhood signs in people's yard, uh, yards that are putting forth this, these extreme ideas. And then they give us an example of one of the signs in their neighborhood. And this is what it says. We believe black lives matter. No human is, is illegal. Love is love. Women are, women's rights are human rights. Science is real. Water is life. And justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Now, we read those things and we say, well, yeah, we can, we can agree that, uh, of course, uh, in a biblical sense, in a biblical sense, of course, black lives matter. So do brown lives. So do yellow lives. So do white lives. Okay. Uh, from a biblical perspective, all lives matter. I mean, Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. Uh, every person is created in the image of God, and therefore every person is worthy of respect. Um, the idea that no human is, is illegal is actually, I mean, that's just a, uh, uh, a wrong-minded idea. There's a legal way to come into this country. There's an illegal way to come into this country. But that doesn't negate the fact that we have a responsibility as the church to minister to all people. All right, so let me not chase a rabbit here. Let me just answer the question. The question is, is how do we as Christians respond to these extreme ideas that are out there that's being pushed by the left? How do we stand and hold for biblical truth? Well, first of all, let me just say that what's happening in our world today should not take us by surprise. As a matter of fact, the Bible, you know, tells us that these things were going to happen. For example, let me just read to you out of 2 Timothy chapter 3. And this is what Paul writes to young Timothy. He says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than loving lovers of God, having the appearance of being godly, but denying its power. He says, avoid such people. Avoid such people. He says, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various pa passions. They're always learning, but never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. Um, I mean, that's pretty clear. I mean, a lot of those extreme ideas that we're talking about are actually indicated here in this passage of Scripture. And so, first of all, Paul told Timothy, he says, man, avoid such people. All right? The best thing you can do is avoid them. All right? But then there's also, you know, but then there's the question of, okay, uh, then how do we stand for biblical truth? I understand that I'm not to be a part of what they're doing. Uh, I'm not to get involved. But yet, we all have responsibility to, to stand for biblical truth. So, uh, let me... Once again, read from 2 Timothy, and this is what Paul says to, these, to, to Timothy. He says, uh, For there is a time coming when people will not endure town teaching. Okay, we're in that time now. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, their own passions. Okay, uh, that's what's happening with these extremist ideas. They will turn away from listening to the truth, and they will wander off into myths. Okay, so that's, we, we see that in a lot of these leftist ideas that are being put forth in our day. They've left the truth and they're following myths. But he says this, and this is how we're going to answer your question. He says, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of the evangelist, 
and fulfill your ministry. So, to answer your question, in light of all these extremist ideas, how are we to live? How are we to respond as uh, Bible-believing Christians? Well, the first thing we can do is follow Paul's example and avoid such people. But if it's impossible to avoid, then let me say this. Then you be sober-minded. You hold on to this truth. You believe this truth. And don't shy away from this truth. Be sober-minded. Be wise. Be discerning. Secondly, endure suffering. Because we will endure suffering if we stand for truth. Thirdly, do the work of an evangelist. In other words, try to win as many people to the Lord as you can. Share the gospel. And then uh, the fourth thing he says is fulfill your ministry. You persevere to the end. So that's my answer to you as your pastor. You know what? There are extremist ideas out there being put forward by the left. I believe that they're only going to increase. We have a responsibility to avoid such people, but also to be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, seek to win as many people as we can to the Lord, and be faithful to persevere unto the end. Well, I hope that answers your question, and I thank you so much for it. And the second question we have for today uh, asks, says this, okay? I've had several debates recently regarding whether or not women can be pastors. I believe, based on what the Bible says, that women can play significant roles within the church, but cannot and should not be pastors. In addition to what's in 1 Timothy, what are other scriptures that can affirm Paul's instructions that only men should be pastors? All right, well, first of all, um, let me answer your question. And uh, one of the things that she asked is, in addition to what's in 1 Timothy. Well, I'm going to answer all your questions. I mean, I'm going to answer your question out of 1 Timothy because I believe that that's the clearest place in the Bible that we see that the role of the pastor is reserved for a man. And so I'm going to stay in 1 Timothy. Uh, I hope that's all right in answering your question. But really the issue here is between two uh, theological uh, understandings. One view is what is known as egalitarianism. And egalitarianism, uh, egalitarianism teaches that, that uh, men and women are not only equal in essence, but they're equal in the roles that, uh, that they carry out in the church. In other words, a woman has the right, according to egalitarianism, a woman has the right to function in the role of a pastor just like a man. All right. The other view is known as complementarianism. Complementarianism teaches that, yes, of course men and women are equal in essence, but they do have di uh, distinct role differences within the church. Um, uh, a complementarianist says that women are significant, they have a valuable role within the church, but clearly what is taught in the Bible, that the role of the pastor is reserved for a man. Okay? I'm a complementarianist. I believe that women are equal to men in essence. Um, I believe that they are a valuable part of the church. They play a significant role, but the role of the pastor is reserved for a man, not for a woman. Of course, those who believe in egalitarianism would argue, but I believe that the support for complementarianism is very strong in the Bible. So uh, let me give you a couple of scripture references out of 1 Timothy. First of all, in 1 Timothy 2.12, Paul writes this, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. And again, this is, this is not referring to the woman's role in ministry. I mean, of course she has a significant role in ministry, a significant role to play in the life of the church. But when it comes to exercising authority, when it comes to the, you know, the preaching and the teaching of the role, uh, the teaching of the word, uh, that is reserved for a male. It doesn't mean that women can't teach women or preach to women, but the role of pastoring and preaching um, is reserved for um, a male. Okay, I mean, that's clear. He says, I do not allow women to exercise authority over a man. Especially in light of, you know, especially in light of your question, pastoring. 
For a woman to pastor a church means that she's exercising authority over a man, unless it's an all-woman church. <laughs> uh, but I haven't seen any of those. So if a woman pastors, she's disobeying this passage. She's outside of God's will. Because if she's pastoring, then she's exercising authority, which the Word of God does not allow. Okay? Uh, in in, um, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, Paul gives us the qualifications for a pastor. And he says that the, the pastor, an overseer, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable. And again, you can read that, but clearly the role of the pastor is for a husband. It's for a male. Um, and then also, let me, let me get over here to, um, to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, he says, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others. I mean, these passages just stand out. I mean, they're easy to interpret. Paul says a woman's not to exercise authority over a man. The role of an overseer is for a man. And Paul told Timothy, and entrust what I have taught you to other faithful men. All right? And so the role of a pastor, according to the clear teaching of God's Word, is reserved for a man. And so therefore, for a woman to pastor a church is to function outside of the will of God. And so let me be clear. Women are equal to men in their essence. But according to the Bible, there is a difference in the roles that they play within the church. And uh, this is not to devalue women, but it's to encourage women to have value in the role that God has given them and be content with that role. Well, God bless you and thank you so very much for your questions today. I pray that they've been a blessing. Look forward to answering more questions next week.